Hello, I'm Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and we're on the Pipulate project in GitHub and I just created uh, this function here and just added the doc string between videos and basically it checks whether the cell that you're on is uh, a candidate for question mark replacement. And the place that I got the check against globals is right here and it occurs to me that I should be consistent in using that function now even in the, this original spot. I'm going to get my syntax or, or nomenclature consistent so this is going to be row dex along with this one other place where I use it and uh, I'm actually going to convert that to a string for this compare. We might be sitting on top of a numerical uh, or integer uh, numbers here because of the two ways it might get fed in from a um, shelf key or which have to be strings or from a, uh, a list index which have to be numbers. So we converted this string to string there for consistency and for handling both cases without an error. And uh, now it's really uh, these two checks here that are that are redundant. So that really just becomes uh, a cell. Okay, we're processing a cell. So if question mark and uh, all rows actually in this case uh, a row that got fed in as a function parameter. And that gets also fed a row dex and cop dex. And we don't have any of those offsets to worry about. The only offset we've had to deal with is when updating the cell. There's no zero column uh, index from gspread. That is not our issue right now. These two checks go away. And these can get outdented by one. And if the world is a good place, behavior should be identical, but now we are now more consistently using the question mark function, which we are about to use again if this is successful. Oh, okay. Oh, just a call in at the end of an if statement. If this is successful, we use it again when processing a CSV or shelf object. Okay, perfectly successful. So let's go look at where we're going to use question mark again. We just did all this for, uh, for Google Spreadsheets. But now We just got this new row back here, and it's going to be this exact code here. But the update statement is going to be different. We're going to be dealing with dictionary API. Get rid of that. Outdent. Get rid of, put a space in there. pass there just to keep it from breaking and update Google Worksheet update shelves object and uh, this is going to be tr kind of tricky to test because we're loading the CSV into uh, into a shell object which is a object on the hard drive and then we update it but at the end it's still just a shell object on the hard drive but nonetheless updating that shell object should be pretty easy it is known as all rows and this probably doesn't have that uh, one based index this is probably a, a zero base index again and the rodex 
It goes into here because it's stepping down through the rows. And then the caldex is going to be a secondary uh, key, I believe. So look for other examples. All rows, we have a row key. We'll do some printing first. Hey, let's just check whether, uh, let's check the whole row first. I'm jumping ahead. We want to print new row. And since question mark replacement is already carried out here, it should essentially be skipping over all this Google spreadsheet stuff and just printing out some rows that has question mark replacement already carried out for the CSV. And we know that because it's got the extra Doctor Who row in it. Let's take a look. Drum roll. Voila! Exactly the output we expected. Now let me pause it while I think through how to update the shell on the hard drive. Well, it occurs to me there were two things wrong in my thinking. First of all, this row dex is incorrect. It should be row key as per this loop I'm going through. But also, this cell-by-cell -cell evaluation is not nearly uh, as much of an issue in a shell of an object as it is in the Google spreadsheet. This API has a way to just replace the whole row with the new row, which we're sitting on top of. We're printing the new row here, and we don't need any of this stuff, which was the thought process for Google Spreadsheets. This is why we're keeping them in, in their own separate functions. The way you step through that outer object and replace rows that you've just processed is very uh, different based on what the outer object is. In this case, a shelf, in the other case, a G-spread uh, object. So we just want to take that, uh, what is that? That's all rows, which is our shelves on our shell object, use the row key that we're sitting on top of. And here we're saying a new row is equal to processing row of that. And now we're just actually plugging in the result of that in that same location. And we don't even need to print it now. We know this is going to work. All rows dot row key now equals the output. In fact, I could even make it uh, more efficient by, by replacing it in location. It might be a little harder to read. I'll leave it like this for now. I first want to make sure that we're not generating any errors. You're not going to see any output at all because it's just updating it in an invisible shelf and all the Google spreadsheet stuff is being skipped because the question marks have been replaced. So I need to think about what to do with the shell of objects. Maybe drop it back onto the hard drive as a CSV. One. Okay, I believe I have the solution. We're simply going to uh, recreate what we're doing with the uh, CSV, which we already have imported. And we use uh, CSV uh, as a reader here, and we're going to use it as a writer. Now it occurs to me I could do the writing in this loop, but I want to keep the shelf handling and the CSV handling separate so that I can maybe make another version of this function later that works just with a shelf object against large backend databases. But right now, while CSV is our, is our um, goal, I'm going to step right through this again for row key and sorted. It's the exact same thing, all rows. But now it's been uh, it's been updated with the new rows in location. So all I need to do is is write row by row. I do have a sample sitting here 
from uh, Stack Overflow. So this is how we open it for writing. That might change there. Let's go uh, set paste, insert paste. Shift V, Shift V. We open the object with open. Okay, so. CSV writer, right, right. Ah, so this is where the iteration occurs. With open, this takes care of the closing. I used sample. I'm going to use sample out. And this probably means writing binary. We have an object writer. Okay, we have an object writer. Now, we can take this guy here, paste that in there. All those row key. This is actually quite interesting. And by the time it exits this, it's automatically opened. So I'm going to save that, and I'm going to step out into a shell, clear, ls. As you can see, there's sample CSV, but there's no sample out. So if I exit, hmm, I can execute the Python from the shell. I don't have to do it the way I've been doing it. So let me, um, I hope I don't have any errors. Python manipulate. I do have an error. String does not support the buffer interface on. In Python 3, the CSV module expects you to give it a file in text mode. Simple as that. Maybe. A lot better out to the shell, ls, ls, sample out. Voila! A CSV file with the uh, question mark replacement done. Whew, that was a long way to go, but this really sets things up for massive uh, list processing and scheduled uh, and automatic list processing. Thanks for joining me, and uh, don't forget to subscribe.